What you said yesterday, obviously you knew what the NCAA allegations were, you knew what the response was, but didn't have the punishment. How much more difficult would it have been if you would have been out of Golden's situation and took the job and didn't find out about everything? Yeah, it, it would have been. I mean, uh, that would have been difficult to to handle. You know, I mean, that's that's where I'm I'm very uh, fortunate that I have a you know, I was able to, uh, you know, spend some time with Bubba and, and Bubba was very forthright and everything that uh, you know before I ever took the job. I and mean, we sat down and we talked uh, extensively about it and uh, because he wanted me to come into the situation with my eyes wide open and and I'm I feel very fortunate that I was able to do that. Coach, kind of talk about. Uh, Coming in and having a quarterback like Brandon who had a good year last year, a running back like Giovanni who also had a good year last year, for you to do what you want to do on offense. And, you know, how, how crucial is that to have two guys in, at those two very, you know, invaluable positions that have played and have succeeded? Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's really crucial to quarterback position because nowadays, if you if you don't have a trigger man, I mean, you, you're not going to go very far. I mean, you, you just take a look at the NFL. I mean, what they say, there's probably maybe seven, maybe eight quarterbacks that can take you to a Super Bowl. And, and I mean, if you if you look around the league, that's about what it is, you know. And if you don't have one of them, you're not going. You know, it's just so uh, same thing. I mean, you got to have one in, in college football. So I feel very fortunate that that. Bren is here. Bren's had some experience, and he can make all the throws. But more importantly, is 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 the type of person Bren is off the field. I mean, I've had guys before that that have the talent that don't get it done because they're not the whole package. But Bren's got the whole package, so I'm excited about that. Geo, you know, he was. Uh, uh, I mean, I know what a what a great kid. First of all, I mean, you know, I mean, just a. A pleasant kid to be around, you know. He's not. He's uh, vertically challenged, and I give him a hard time about that all the time. And you know, he, he's uh, he, he takes it with a grain of salt, you know. And so, uh, but it, it took about you know your first two days in spring, you're in shorts. So I don't put a whole lot of stock into what we do in shorts. But there was one guy that while we were in shorts, it, it didn't take me but about half a day to figure out he was special, you know. So uh, you know, I, I, I hope that uh, Geo has a big year for us this year. When you have a guy who's a thousand yard rusher like Geo and then there's a, there's a new coach who's going to install the spread, obviously you have a very balanced spread offense and that's well documented, but how quickly did Geo get on board once he found out what your spread was really about? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. everybody asked me, when did these guys decide? When did they, you know, I, I don't know. I, I told them day one, they didn't have a choice. So I, I'm guessing it was day one, you know? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm here, this is what we're going to do, like it or not, this is what we're going to do. So. Uh, you know, he, he's been, I think Gio's been, I think all these kids bought in from the very start. I think they were hungry, you know, to have some stability in the program. And they just wanted to move forward. You know, there were, there were so many things happening around the program, and they were the forgotten ones. Everybody's talking about everything else, but they didn't really talk about the team and what was going on with them and, and not knowing who your coaches are going to be. I mean, because if you've ever played college football, I mean, you, you, you're you four years with a, a man that you build a relationship with, and he becomes a father-like figure to you. And, and to not have that, you know, is, is a tough thing. And so I think, you know, these guys, when when we stepped foot on campus, I think they, they totally jumped in right away. And that, and that, that was kind of a surprise to me when you when you came into why did you feel compelled to ban caps and earrings uh, you know I, I don't know why that's just the way I was raised I mean you know people say well what does that have to do with football I don't know yeah I don't know you know but uh, I, I just I mean if you're gonna represent our football team and, and I'm gonna be the leader of this football team. You're not gonna wear a hat in the building and you're not gonna have an earring in when you're representing us. That's just the way I am. That's old school. Maybe it's stupid, I don't know, but it's it's who I am and it's the way we're gonna do things. I don't have a good answer for you. That was a good answer. Um, <laughs> where did you come up with that from? I was raised that way, you know. My mom and dad, you didn't wear a hat in the house. I mean, it's not the, that's not what a man does. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure as that couldn't get an earring, and, you know, <laughs> have to move out of the house. So, do you, know. you do you feel it's just it's going to help with discipline? I mean, is it something like that too? I, you know, I, I don't know if it. I don't know. I, I really haven't put a whole lot of thought into it. It's just who I am yeah. as a person, and you know. The team is a, uh, a direct reflection of me, and so, you know, I, I think that's important. I mean, I, I expect them to play with the same energy level that I coach at, you know, so I expect them to take on my personality in a lot of different ways. And you know what, you know, I, I don't know if they, they really understand that because a lot of them have not been raised that way. 
You know, I mean, it's a different different culture, different society. I, I understand that, but I'm still running the show, and, and it's not a democracy. And so we don't vote on it. You know, I just said this is what we're going to do, and it's what we're going to do. Are there any other rules like that? Uh, no, you know what? We don't really have a lot of uh, – lot. I mean, the you know, the big thing is to – do the right thing. I mean, you know, I mean, you, I tell them you got three questions you ask yourself. I mean, if it's going to embarrass me, meaning the player, my family, or my teammates, then I know don't do it, whatever it is. I mean, if you can say yes to any of those three questions, then don't do it. I mean, there's not a player on my football team doesn't know the difference in right and wrong, every single one of them. The reason I know that because I asked them all that. They all raise their hand. So I know they know the difference in right and wrong. So, you know, I mean, life's about choices. And then when sooner they understand that every choice you make in life has a consequence, you know, hopefully they'll make better choices. Could, I mean, yeah. Could, could you get labeled as, as an offensive guru like a lot of guys do who run the spread and run that? But obviously being a head coach, you're responsible for both sides of the ball. And you mentioned Kevin a little bit. At a, all three phases of the ball. All three phases, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you mentioned Kevin a little bit. But uh, talk about, you know, Carolina's had a lot of great defensive players in, in recent years, number one, you know, or first yeah. round draft picks, whatever. Kind of talk about, you know, to keep that tradition going, you know, what what's going to be the most important thing about keeping the defense strong? Well, I think one is is implementing the 4-2-5. I'm, I'm totally sold uh, on that defense and what you can do with that defense and the problems that it causes for an offense. You know, and then it's it's going out and recruiting great players. But, I mean, we got guys like Sylvester Williams, uh, you know, that if, if I wouldn't have brought Kevin, that would have been the next guy I would have brought. I mean, the way he represents the school and everything he does. And, you know, I, I think if he stays healthy and the good Lord willing, he'll, he'll have a chance to play at the next level and probably go pretty early. You got guys like Kareem Martin up there up front right now that I think's got a chance to have a really big year this year. So I think it, the, the sooner we can figure out you know, where those guys need to go in this new defense, where they need, who needs to be the bandit, who needs to be the ram, who are those hybrid guys, and then take advantage of what they can do, the sooner, you know, the better we're going to be. But uh, it, it's very, very important that we keep the tradition alive of, of having great defensive players here at North, North Carolina. Every system has strengths and weaknesses. Does running the spread offense make you more susceptible to the running game on your defense? You know, a, a lot of people say that, but I'll tell you, you know, if you go back to these last, uh, the last two years in a row, there's only been two teams in the country that have, you know, that have rushed for over 200 yards and thrown for over 250, and we're one of those two teams to do that in the last <laughs> consecutive years. Uh, so, you know, when I say spread, immediately everybody thinks, you know, go fast and throw it every down. That's not who we are. I mean, we, we, you know, in the last five years, we've averaged over 205 yards rushing a game. Well, there are teams that run the ball all the time that don't average 205 yards rushing. You know, so we, we pride ourselves on being able to do both. I don't believe that defenses can take both away. Now they can decide. You know what? We're going to take the run away, and they can, you know, they can, uh, they can put eight, nine up in the box, and they can take the run away from you. Well, I'm the kind of guy. I'm not going to beat my head against the wall. If you want to take the run away, fine, we'll throw it. If you decide you're going to drop everybody and stop the pass, then we'll run it. I don't care. We're just going to take what you give us. But what about your rush defense? Yeah, you think it? Does it hurt our defense? Yeah. I don't think so. No, I really don't think so. I mean, one, because of the way we structure practice, where we give the defense what they need. I mean, we're, and, and, and again, you know, we're going to be a physical football team. Our, we have to be able to run the football. So we're going to do it against our defense. Whether the numbers are good or not, we're going to still run it. With the Penn State and CAA stuff, do you have any thoughts on what kind of precedent this sets in terms of the NCAA just you know, ruling on something without going through its normal? Chance. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just the only thing I saw there was that uh, you know that they said that they felt like the uh, the investigation was more thorough than they could have done on their own, and that's that's why they used uh, the, what is it the free report? Is that what it's called? Uh, so you know, I really I really don't know enough about it to to know what the, what precedent's been set. I think we're uh, you know, but things are definitely changing. I mean, when when the uh, the NCAA president can step out there like that and and, and basically. Uh, have the blessing of the Board of Governors or whatever, uh, the, the Board of Directors, to be able to do what he wants at any time. I think that's, that's a pretty big deal. Has the defensive 
calling that has that situation become clear? I know that Vic and Dan were that in your introductory press conference. And you guys have got me going everywhere. I mean, yeah, you know, we're talking <laughs> football, we're NCAA. Now you got me on the defense. Welcome to the ACC. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> but has, uh, that, has that become more clear at all of, of who's going to be? Making it may have. Uh, I don't know. I mean, because uh, you know we just got off vacation uh, last week, and we but we haven't met as a staff now to sit down and go through all those things yet. But we will here before the season starts. So. You know, I'm sure that those two guys have been working out because it was one of the things that we said when we come back from the summer, I would like to have a pretty good feel on how we're going to do that. And I've left that totally up to them because they worked together before. So I'm sure it's going to be pretty pretty uh, much the way they had done it before. They'll probably tweak some things. So, What's made you such a strong believer in the 4 2 five? Uh, You know, probably uh, I'll say this. I mean, we were right on the edge at Southern Miss. Uh, of being a really good football team, but we couldn't get over the hump. We go to the 4-2-5, and we got over the hump. And, uh, you know, we played Houston in that bowl game. They had the best offense in the country at that time, and numbers are six in the country. And, uh, you know, in that case, Keenum was a really good quarterback, and he didn't know where our guys were coming from. And so, uh, you know, that that final uh, nail was the thing that, uh, that did put it over the top for me. But, I, you know, it's very – I mean, what it does is it enables you to get to a 3-4 or a 4-3 with the same personnel on the field. So it makes it more difficult for a def uh, an offensive coordinator or a quarterback, you know, to figure out what you're in and what you're doing, who's dropping, who's rushing, what coverage you're disguising, what you're getting into. So I I'm sold on it. Does it put more speed?